Mr. Truck here with an ATV review. This is my Honda Rancher. We've got a couple of these and a Kawasaki and we use these to test weight on these trucks and SUVs and go up to the mountains. And I've been working on this snowplow project for a long time. I finally got it on. Thought I was saving money on those Thanksgiving sales afterwards. I picked up this from Cabela's. 200 bucks for a 50 inch plow. Seemed like a very good price. Picked up a winch. It was a uh, champion for like 80 bucks. Thought I had it made for less than 300 because that's what they're selling for on Craigslist. So I get all this home and it's a nightmare. A bad nightmare. The winch does not fit this rancher very well. This is 2014. I bought it new in 15 and that 14 seems to be an odd year. So I took this whole nose piece off, tried to put that champion on, wouldn't fit. You know, and they said it's a universal fit, call champion, and they, uh, 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 I don't know, they, <laughs> we don't know, it's supposed to be a universal fit, they didn't know what it fit, or how to change it, or what to do, they said, well, call Honda, go to your manufacturer, that didn't make sense to me, if I was to buy running boards for my Ford truck, and call DZ, or whoever I might buy them from, and they wouldn't say, hey, go call your Ford dealer, let him figure it out, no, they would tell you how to fit it, so I was disappointed with champion, but anyway, that was that. But I took the whole nose piece off and took it around to all these stores, Cabela's and Tractor Supply and, of course, Harbor Freight. And seven different winches would not fit. So I had to end up going back to my, my son Honda, where I bought the four-wheelers from, and where I bought in buying the winch. But I had to buy a special plate just for the rancher. And then I had to get a 2,000-pound worn winch, which is fine. I mean, 700-pound ATV. Why, why do I want a 3,000-pound one? I just thought it was cool. but. I mean, if I can't pull myself out and somebody else out 2,000 pounds, it's not, not right. But So anyway, mounted it on there, put it upside down, and then the switch, it's got a toggle switch on a handlebar. And that's cool. And then I had to run seven wires, ran it clear back by the battery box, there's a little capacitor everything runs into. Ran all the wires off the exhaust and out of the bad places. Thought I had it made, and nothing happened. I, I don't know, I was really surprised. But uh, it takes a lot of power to run these winches. So I ended up buying the worn 2,000 pound winch from Sun Honda, and they gave me a good deal on it. But you know, it's got a five year warranty on it. If you have a bigger winch, it's lifetime warranty. But I knew the dependability was there, so anyway, it didn't work. After I got it all on there, and it's pretty easy to install because everything's color coded, all your cables. So I got it all on there, it wouldn't work. So I you know, looked at my owner's manual. They said, well, don't call us, call your dealer that you bought it from. And I thought that was a little bit weird. But I guess if I if last resort, you would call Warren Winch. So anyway, call Sun. I said, this is the problem. It's not working. And I said, so, you know, if I bring it in, and if it's my fault, of course, I'll pay labor. But if it's Warren's fault, they pay for everything. And they said, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, you know, that's the easy thing for sales guys to say. Even service writers are salespeople. But no big deal. Sun's a good store. Take it in there. They had it for a week. They said, yeah, the switch is bad. The toggle switch on the handlebars. So they had to, you know, get it all situated with warrants to make sure they covered the price of the switch. Go and pick it up, and I did have to pay for the labor, like 52 bucks, whatever it was, for what they did to it, which was, it's not a big deal. So now my 300 dollars winch is about $500. And it was not an easy, anything easy on it, even the, the brackets. The brackets was an, an angle iron and two uh, ear brackets that, uh, ear brackets that attach to the main frame of the plow. And then the angle iron goes behind it, and they bolt together. And then all that has four U-bolts comes from the top of the frame to go around it. And looking at the manual that came with, you know, the snow plow, it will take your skid plate off. Well, I'm not going to take my skid plate off. I'm not going to take it off put it on every year. So I took the cowling off all around the gas tank and went from the top down where I wanted to find where the frame was. And that worked out really well. I just had to do some adjustments. Most of it fit. There's one angle iron in the back that it all bolts to, and the angle irons go through that and the ears. And that was too long, so I had to chop it off in the middle, cut out a section, and then weld it back together. Now it fits fine. So I got it, I finally got it together. So now I'm excited. I'm going to go plow some snow. You know, we've only had two inches or two, two 10 inch snows so far in Colorado, so I'm looking forward to the, the next big one so I can go try it out. This 
little three inch snow we had the other night that's not to play in I want to play in some deep stuff but it's made so you can take it off quickly two pins in the winch hook and then you're ready to go and I did lose I think two inches of clearance underneath there where the brackets go and you know that's because there's brackets there they, they go down I mean I don't know I suppose a factory one or one designed just for this would fit better but so I got two inches I gotta figure out what to do with I will probably get bigger tire size I was thinking about tracks that would give me three inch lift the tracks are expensive and I don't have power steering so I'm not sure that I want to do that yet and all the maintenance that goes with tracks so I'm probably going to get bigger tires and wheels and jack it up a couple inches if I can get my clearance back but anyway one more toy on my rancher four-wheeler my Honda so I can go out and play in the snow the other thing I want to show off is fuel tanks. I like about Honda is they have their tank on the side. I mean Suzuki has them on the back. Most of them put them in the middle and who wants to slop gas all over the middle? This is much more convenient so I've always liked this place to put the gas tank. But gas cans, I mean they, I, I know they regulate try to save our lives all the time but they are such a pain in the butt and this thing, if I can even get it open, has the nozzle. Of course the nozzle that you pull out and that's all fun but you know, then this has two handles, so I like that. So this is not so bad, but it's a pain about pulling this handle out. So if I leave it out, it gets dirt gets in there. But what they replace these with is a little thing with a safety device, so when it's full, it shuts off, which is good. Pain in the butt, like everything else, they come out and make it safer. But that's how that goes. So a lot of people have done, like I've done, they'll use a racing can. And these racing cans, you know, they're fast and they're furious. And you know, you fill up quickly, but you know, you don't have a handle here. You get it in that nozzle and you have to hang on to that heavy thing. And you know, five gallons, 40 pounds, yeah, it's, it's, it's heavy. And you get to the end, how do you shut it off? You know, they do make, on one of these models, they make a little handle up here. But anyway, this has been the next solution to get gas easy in and out and spill some. And I like it better than the old cans, and I sure like it better than that new can that the government's pushing on everybody that has a little filler in it. But I was at the International Sportsman Expo in Denver and I got this puppy. And this the nozzle comes at the bottom, it's flat, so you can actually tie it onto a four-wheeler and strap it down, which I like. And we'll be doing that. And it's got a handle up here, and you flip this down and the nozzle comes at the bottom. And you have a relief valve. So you undo the cap or pull the little strap out. There's your gas can and you swivel it down and there you can pour it into something. So you can set it on your racks and pour it in there and then you have the safety handle on top. So all you do is push on that, push on the safety handle and you pull that down and it squirts out, opens up a valve in here. It's got two O-rings on that swivel. So then I can sit here, get it up, pour it in to my gas can. Actually, let me give you a full demonstration here. I should have the full Monty here. You put that in there, and it sits there. Then you open the valve, and now it's open. That's flowing in there now. When I see, when I hear it, and I see it getting full, I just release the valve. It's awesome. I was glad they came up with this. These gas cans are a pain in the butt, but you got to use it. You know, they don't burn on hydrogen cell yet, or so I guess there's a few out there with batteries. That'd be fun to try, a battery one. But anyway, so that's my favorite gas can is the Sure Can. That probably is the website. They don't pay me to do this, so I'm not as smooth. <laughs> but this one has to be a five gallon can. But that's what I'm thinking it is. It's SureCanUSA.com. So SureCanUSA.com. I'll actually put that on the screen. Now we'll show you some more things about ATVs. Mr. Truck here, some exciting news. My book is finally out. I wrote this book with Andre Smirnoff of the Fastlane Truck. It's the, the Fastlane Truck's guide to pickup trucks. And what that means is 
Andre talks about all the different stats in here, the different races we did, the different tests we did, climbing up the mountain with loads, doing miles per gallon with loads, doing the track with loads, all these different things uh, to help judge a truck and then pick about the best ones. He talks about future trucks. On my side, I talk about how to judge a used truck. Should you buy a new truck or a used truck? Should you buy a diesel or a gas truck? So all those things are in there. We talk about transmissions. We talk about trailers, how to get the trailer matched to your truck so it's a safe towing experience. So we talk about payload, how to figure that, girls combined weight rating, axle weight rating, tongue weight, all those different things. We talk about teenage safety when they learn to drive. So we're doing a lot of that in the book. And you can get this at all the independent stores like Tattered Cover. You can get it on Amazon. You can get it on Barnes & Noble. And it's just awesome. If you want to look up Google, just go Truck Nets Book. Make sure you put book in there or you might be surprised. But buy the book. Mr. Truck here, showing you the vehicles we use for weight and for, you know, usage with the trucks we review because, you know, when you have a pickup, you use it for things. You tow your boat, you tow your horse trailer, you haul your ATVs, your motorcycles, all those fun things. I mean, that's the pickup it can be a fun tool or it can be a work tool, all those things together. And so we've got two ATVs here. Uh, a bit of a contrast between the two that we use to load and see how they size up for pickup beds. This one is the Kawasaki 2015 Brute Force 300. It's two-wheel drive. It's a fun little rascal to run around in. Uh, it starts fast. It gets up and goes quick off the line because it's a CVT transmission run with a belt and a variable pulley. Like snowmobiles, the old combines when I was a kid. And it's uh, it's fun, and as a two-wheel drive, with the tires that it has, it does very well. It'll go up quite a bit of mud, and we do a lot with it. And it's uh, six foot six long, a little bit less than that. But I can put this on a Ram box. You know, in Rams, most of them are six three, six four, whatever you want to call it. And this will fit on those beds, and I like that. And uh, we we use this for you know dragging the yard. We use this for having fun out in ranches. And our new vehicle we just got, even though it's 2014, it's brand new, is this, this is the Honda Rancher. And it's a four-wheel drive electric shift. But it's a 420 uh, engine size. This is a 300. And this being four-wheel drive, it is six inches longer and about four inches wider. So this is about seven feet long. This barely fits in any of the <laughs> regular uh, short beds, you've got about have an eight foot bed or use a bed extender on a six foot six. Now Ford does have a Ford Super Duty short bed of six foot eight. You might be able to push the tires up in this and get that in there. We'll try that. But uh, these are our two machines. This is about 560 pounds. This is over 600 pounds. That gives us weight. We load it in the horse traders too for weight on some of these runs we do. But uh, we test ramps with it. We just uh, we have a lot of fun with them, and they're the toys that we haul in our trucks. We had a motorcycle, and we traded it off on this new Honda, and we'll be getting another motorcycle. We want to have as many toys as we can, and as many ways to use these pickups as possible, uh, to see so you can see how they perform, uh, with the same kind of uh, weights and loads that you want to use them for. So join us on MrTruck.com as we review trucks, traders, and accessories. We tow with traders with everything we use so that you know how they pull traders. You can't always do that at a dealership. So come join us.